In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through Airtable, a powerful tool that's going to revolutionize the way you organize, manage, and automate your data. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Josh Jackson. I'm an automation expert, and my goal is to help you do more faster. Whether you're a small business owner, a project manager, or simply someone looking to streamline your information, Airtable is the perfect tool that will take your workflow to the next level. So what is Airtable and how is it different from existing spreadsheet applications like Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel? So Airtable is a database designed for team collaboration. And unlike traditional spreadsheets, Airtable consolidates data across your organization and it brings together your processes all on a single platform. With Airtable, you can build custom interfaces, automate processes, and scale your data management needs. So with that said, in today's video, we're going to cover the fundamentals of Airtable. You can expect to walk out of here with a complete understanding of how databases are structured in Airtable, Airtable field types, Airtable interfaces, and last but not least, how automations work in Airtable. But before we dive deeper, if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on my latest tutorials. And if you need any help with anything related to Airtable, I offer services in this area and you can send me an email at hello at joshnocode.com. So in terms of database hierarchy, you have workspaces, bases, and tables. An Airtable account can have multiple workspaces. And then within each workspace, you have bases. A workspace can have multiple bases. And then within each base, you have tables. A single base can have multiple tables. And you could think of each table similar to a worksheet in Google Sheets. So here we are in Airtable looking at a brand new Airtable account. And if you look up to the left here where it says all workspaces, this is where you'll see all of your workspaces listed for your Airtable account. And to create a workspace, there's two ways of doing it. You can click on this little plus icon or you can go off to the right here and click on this blue button that says create a workspace. So quick overview on workspaces. A workspace gives you the ability to organize your bases, helping you keep your bases structured and easily accessible in one spot. It's especially helpful when dealing with multiple databases. Think if you were an accounting firm uh, that offered two different types of services. You could create one workspace for managing bookkeeping clients and services, and you could have another workspace for managing tax return clients and services. That's just one example, and the number of workspaces people need it varies for my own business i'd be perfectly fine with one workspace but everyone's different of course and has different needs so let's go ahead and create a workspace i'm going to name this workspace example company and to share access uh, to this workspace with a colleague and have them collaborate within the workspace just click on the share button and then uh, from there enter in the user's email address and you need to specify a role type and then click on the send invite button so I'm just going to share it uh, with a, another email of mine. And in terms of role type, you have creator. Creators can fully configure and edit bases. Then you have editors. Editors can edit records and views, but they cannot configure tables or fields. Uh, then you have a commenter. Uh, commenters can leave comments on the records. And then you have read only. Uh, and then you could make them actually the owner of the workspace. Uh, and owners can fully configure and edit bases and manage workspace settings and billing. So very similar to uh, traditional spreadsheet applications like Google Sheets. So I'm just gonna go here and I'm going to make my other email address a creator. Next, let's explore bases. A base is where you store and organize your data. It can be thought of as a digital database or spreadsheet that allows you to create multiple tables. So go ahead and click on the create a base button. I am going to now name the base. So simply, I'm just gonna call this base team. And from there, you can select a color for the base. I'm just gonna give it this blue color. Uh, you can assign an icon. So I'm just going to click this little folder icon here. So now that the base has been created, 
let's go ahead and talk about tables. So each table within a base corresponds to a specific type of information that you want to track. In the table itself, you can define fields and create new records. So everything that we're looking at right here, uh, this little tab sticking out that says table one, everything below, um, the this specific table with the columns and the rows. So that's all just one table. And we can actually change the name of this table by clicking on this little drop down arrow right here. Uh, and then going over here where it says rename table and we just give it a new name. So we're gonna call this table employees and click on save. Um, so below right here where it's, you see where it says grid view, this is where you could really just manage all the views for um, this table right here. And to create a new view, you could just go ahead and click on this little grid section right here. And then from there, you can define filters, you could define which columns you want to show or hide and uh, save, save, the, uh, save the view on the table. Um, everything below right here, uh, these are just creating specific types of interfaces and we're going to dive into that later. And to create a new table, just scroll up top right here and you'll see this little plus icon. Go ahead and click on that and then you can create a new table from scratch uh, or you can create a table from a defined data source, um, such as the list that you see right here. You can choose from an existing Airtable base, a CSV file, Google Calendar, Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, Salesforce, and there's uh, many other data sources that you can select from. So when a new base is created and a new table is created within that base, Airtable is going to provide a set of default columns or fields. You can see these columns right here and you'll have a default for name, notes, assignee and status. And of course you can go ahead and delete these columns by just clicking on this little drop down arrow right here, scrolling down and click the default field because we won't need them for our example. So uh, as I just showed you, you can actually customize each um, specific column or field just by clicking on this little drop down arrow and you can change the, the name of the field by clicking edit field and specifying uh, what you want to call the column. So I'm going to call this one, this field employee ID. And then below you'll actually see um, there's a drop down for the field type. And this is where you're just really specifying what type of data is being tracked in uh, the cells for this specific field. So we have things like uh, single line text, long text, you could track a date, phone number, email address, URL, number, currency, percent, duration. You could do formulas. You could have um, auto number, which is actually what we're going to select in this example. And then you could have things like barcodes. So I'm gonna select auto number because we're um, actually tracking an ID and we want it to uh, automatically generate a unique incremental numbers for each record. And then you can just also add uh, a description. That's of course optional. So I'm, I'll just say something like uh, tracking employee ID, something like that. And I'll go ahead and click save. And then you'll see there's this little, um, little icon for information uh, right here. And you can see it just saying tracking uh, employee ID. So that's, that's helpful. So you can see here that uh, rows one, two, and three, they auto populated one, two, and three with those values and add a new row. You could just click on the little plus icon right here. You can see that it just added a value of four. We're gonna click it again. It adds a value of five. We click it again, value of six, and once more, value of seven. So you can see that this is a perfect use case for an employee ID because all of the IDs here will be unique. All right, so let's just fill out the rest of our database here. So I'm gonna add some additional columns to track employee information. First column I'm going to add is I'm gonna add a first name. I'm gonna make that a single line text. Then I'm gonna add a uh, last name to track the employee last name, make it a single line text as well. And now I'm going to add a uh, email address. Scroll down here, you'll see an option to track the email uh, for field type. And I'm gonna do the same thing for phone number as well. So let's do phone number. And you'll see a data type for phone number. Let's select that one. And uh, let's add an employment date. So this is going to track the date um, 
that the employee was employed and we'll scroll down here and we see an option uh, for tracking the date and uh, we have some options here we can configure the date format you can select from multiple different types of date formats you can have it in a local date uh, more friendly and dates uh, you could have a US format you could have it in a, a European format or you can make it in an ISO format so I'm just gonna uh, keep it as local and then you have the option to include a time if you're going to include a time uh, Airtable allows you to specify a time format so you could keep it in a 12 hour format or you could make it in a 24 hour uh, format as well so uh, we're not going to include a time here and uh, let's just go ahead and create the field so the next one is we're going to add a employment agreement so this is going to be a file so let's go ahead and select a file So we can make this data type attachment. And the nice thing is that um, Airtable allows you to upload multiple files here. Uh, just jumping back to the date really quick to cover that. Um, you can see when we click into the cell for employment date, uh, we have this nice looking calendar that pops up. We can change the month and we can select the date. So just wanted to show you that. And then as far as the uh, file, we can have a cell can um, support multiple files so we could have three four or five different types of documents or images um, in this cell which is really nice it's not just limited to one file so next we're gonna add a few drop down columns so we're gonna have a drop down column for empl uh, employee type and when I say drop down I mean uh, really single selection uh, here so let's make the options uh, part-time and let's have an option for full time. And next we're going to have um, a column for compensation type. And this is going to be the same, same data type. Uh, we're going to have single selection and the options here. We are going to have an option, option for hourly. And then we're going to have another option for salary. And to complete this table for now, we're just going to have a, a final single selection field and the options for this one, it's just gonna be positions and the specific positions are gonna be database admin. We're gonna have a position for IT manager, a position for a software engineer, and then last but not least, an option for a product owner. All right, it's time to create some test records and then from there we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that that's done, let's explore a few features that can be very useful to help us manage our data. So you can increase row height by clicking on the line spacing icon right here. You can select from having the row height be short to medium to tall to extra tall. And then Airtable also allows you to color code records. Uh, this feature is available on the team plan. It's not available on the free plan. So you will need to upgrade to access that feature. And Airtable also allows you to sort records. Um, you could sort by the different field types in your table. Um, for example, we could sort by position and it's currently set by sorting first to last. We could sort by last to first and you can see all the records, um, they flip. So you can do this um, for different types of records. 
Um, you can see here for employee ID, which is set to sort from one to nine. We can sort from um, nine to one. So that's um, very useful. And then another very useful feature is grouping. Um, grouping essentially separates, uh, breaks your up your tables into mini tables where each table essentially represents a specific value within a larger field type. So for example, we can group the table by employee type. And now you could see that Airtable separated the employee type uh, field into two mini tables. We have a table for part-time employees, and then we have another table for full-time employees. So this is a very useful feature. And of course, um, now last but not least, there is filtering. You could also filter within a group, but we're not gonna do that. So in order to filter records, we need to first add a condition. So you could do that by clicking on this little plus icon, add condition. And this is our condition right here that needs to be filled out. So conditions will always start with where, and then we have the field type, um, which you need to select. And this is really looking at a very specific field. Then we have the logical operator because this field right here is a number. Um, then the logical operator is going to be a mathematical operator. And then we here on the right, we enter the value. So this is what makes the condition um, valid and, and, and filters the specific record that we wanna see. So for example, let's try to find um, a record where the employee ID is equal to four. We pulled that record. We can do the same thing for five six and it's not showing right here it's blocking our view but you can see that the data is changing on the right side so we know it is successfully filtering the records and now let's filter by compensation type and now that com compensation type it's short text so it's uh, this is a text operator and so the conditions are is the operators are is, is not, is any of, is none of, empty, is not empty. So we're just going to leave it as is, and we're going to simply select salary. So this is going to filter all of our salary employees, and we have four in the table. And we can make this even more granular by adding an additional condition right here. So we have an and condition. This can also be or if you wanted to. And the field we're going to look at is positions. We're going to leave it as is. And we are going to select software engineer. So we originally had four records. And now the table is displaying two based off of these filter conditions that were met. So that's how you filter. So the next logical action would be to add a column to this table that tracks the actual compensation for each employee. But since employees can either be hourly or salaried, the compensation frequency is tracked differently. So we can do one of two things. Create two columns, one to track hourly rates and another to track annual salaries. Or we can manage hourly rates and annual salaries in a separate table and link these entries back to records in the employees table. I prefer to do the latter because it keeps the data cleaner and more organized. So let's go ahead and just close this filter and let's go ahead and create a new blank table. So we're going to name this table compensation and let's just delete some of these default fields. For the first one, we want to name this one compensation ID. And each of these rows is essentially gonna track a unique compensation. So we'll make this a single line text. Next one we're gonna add is compensation amount. And this is going to actually track the figure. We can make this uh, a currency. Next, we're going to add a compensation type. And it is simply going to be a single selection. Options are gonna be uh, per hour. 
and then per year. And last but not least, we're going to create the link to the other table. So for this one, we want to just link to another record. We're going to link it to employees. And for the name of this column, we're going to call it associated employees. And we can just skip the lookup field for now. So from here, let's just add some sample compensations. And now if we go into the employees table, we see that we have a new column for compensation. That's the link with the compensation table. And let's now associate some employees with a given compensation. So click this little plus icon and you can see this is our list of employees from the employees table. So I'm going to go ahead and just add one, two with compensation one. We'll do employees three and four for compensation two. Employees five and six for compensation three. And finally, employees seven and eight for compensation four. So if we go back now, we can see that each of these employees is uniquely associated with a specific type of compensation. And so now that connection has successfully been established between the two tables. So the next objective is to pull the exact compensation amount into the employees table and display that next to each individual employee record. So to do that, we're going to create a new column. We're gonna call this exact compensation amount. And to accomplish this, we're going to select a roll, roll up. And specifically what a rollup is, it's a field that performs calculations, it creates aggregates and builds formulas on top of specific cells from records that are already linked to another field in another table. So for the rollup, you need to select a rollup source. So for the rollup source, we're going to select compensation. And for the specific field that we want to roll up, it's going to be the compensation amount. So um, there's already a default formula that gets entered in, uh, the aggregation formula, which rolls up the values in each records. And it's just gonna be some of the values. And so we're just going to now create the field. And you could see that the compensations from the other table um, get successfully rolled up. So now you could see that hourly employees, they have an hourly rate you have the salaried employees and they have an annual salary rate that gets pulled in and uniquely associated with each record. So the next thing to cover is how to incorporate formulas into your table. So uh, we're going to calculate payroll tax for each employee. So to do this, we're going to add a column for tax percent and we're going to make the data type a percent. And let's just create this field and make it a standard 10% for each row. Next, we're going to add payroll tax, and we're going to make this a formula. So simply, uh, we are just going to multiply the exact compensation amount times the tax percentage. So you just have to type it in verbatim exact compensation amount times the tax percent and go ahead and create the field and you can see that it performed the calculation accordingly however we want to format this as a currency so to do that just edit the field go into formatting and simply select the currency and now you can see the currency for the, the payroll tax has been fixed and we have the correct amounts here. Next, let's explore interfaces. 
So Airtable interfaces are super powerful because they allow you to create front end pages. And these front end pages give you the ability to do amazing things with your data. Using interfaces, you can create so many different types of pages. You create lists, gallery, Kanban boards, calendars, timelines, dashboards, forms, record views, record summaries, or you could just create an interface from scratch or even take a bunch of interfaces and create a custom application. So let's create an interface here. So I'm going to call this interface employee management. And next you need to choose a lay layout. So you can see here that we can select a list gallery, Kanban, calendar, timeline, many of the options I mentioned before. So for this example, we're just going to select a list and next you want to connect a table. So this is essentially selecting a data source for your interface. So out of the tables we have employees and compensation, let's go ahead and select employees. And this is the interface editor specifically for a list. Um, and you can see here, here are the columns in our list. We have the rows and this is very powerful because you could publish this list and, and give it to a specific department or give it to a vendor, give it to a customer without exposing access to the entire database. And we have the option here to make some of these um, fields editable and some that are not editable. So just to click on any of these cells here in the, in the column and then from there, uh, you can click on the specific fields here. You can see we can make it view only or editable. So I'll make the first last name editable. And yeah, that is good. And the thing that we could also do here is we can also add actions like a button. So I'm going to add a button that links to my website, Josh No Code. We'll add the destination. That looks good. And before we publish, there is one more thing just to show here. Actually, a few more things, but you could see if you scroll down, here are the fields in our in our list. And these are the ones that are visible. And if we want, we could hide specific fields. So I'll just hide um, that one, I'll hide the compensation type, leave positions. And if I want to add them back, you can see they're in hidden fields right here. So I could add the employee type back. And that's how you configure this. So it's almost like you're setting a predefined view for the list. Um, and you could also enable things like comments as well. So let's go ahead and publish this list. So this is our interface and you can see it's just uh, limited access to the database, just pulling data from the employees table. And we can make changes to the first and last name for each of the records. So I'll just do Josh Jackson, my name. And you can see that updated on the list. And if we click into it again, you see we have the button and that takes us to our website. So. That is a cool type of interface that you can uh, create. And of course, there are many other interfaces here. And the next thing that I want to show you regarding interfaces is we're gonna create another, actually a new interface here. We're gonna add a new page and we are simply going to add a form. We're gonna pull the data from the employees table. Well, actually post data to the employees table using this form. And we can just keep all of the fields in the employee table on this form. And we'll call this employee registration form. So this is the form. You can see the fields um, that are pulled from the database, from the employees table. And we can do things like change the button, the text button text. So we'll make this submit button. 
and we can also um, do things specific things with the fields so if you click into the fields you can change the size of the fields make them uh, actually the inputs larger we'll just set it at default add helper text your first name um, we can also make fields required through toggling them on so make these two required and as we scroll down the thing here is we can actually set very specific logic logical conditions to show or hide or even populate some of these fields so to do that when you click into the field you'll see data options show this field based on specific conditions toggle that on conditions so then you need to set the condition here so where and then for this one we are going to want to show positions if compensation type has a value so simply where scroll down compensation type and then we'll scroll down and we'll select is not empty so that should do it and then you'll see positions will be hidden but it will be visible when compensation types has a value and now the last field that we want to add to the form is simply going to be the compensation so let's make that visible and besides that the form is ready to go so let's go ahead and publish it now once your form is published let's make a test submission we're gonna put um, our name in here we're going to add an email add a phone number Attach a file. And you can see here that now that compensation type has a value, positions is now visible. So we'll make it a product owner. And let's again demonstrate that again. Compensation type, empty. Compensation type is going to be salary. And we'll select product owner as the value. And now we need to add a compensation, which is just going to be a record. So we'll go with number four. Make the submission. Here we are back in the employees table, and you could see that from the form submission, the error table created a new record in the employees table, and you could see that record is nine. We could see um, all the information from the form that was submitted and we entered in a value of four for compensation uh, which is the linked record back at the compensation table and that rolled up the exact compensation uh, salary 120,000 and we have the correct position correct compensation type uh, which is everything we need for this record but the two values that are missing are the tax percent and the payroll tax and it's missing because the tax percent is missing. So theoretically, we could just enter in 10% here and then the payroll tax will populate. But we want these values to automatically populate every single time the form is submitted and a new record is created in the employees table. So how can we do that automatically? Well, we could do it with automations. And this is the automation editor in Airtable where we could create um, new automations, we could manage existing automations, and automations allow you to take your database workflows to the next level because you could really do some all sorts of amazing things. You could create workflows that automatically send emails, create new records, look up records, update records, run custom scripts, and you could also set up workflows that perform actions in external apps like Slack or Microsoft Teams, Gmail, Outlook, Google Calendar, Google Sheets, and so many more um, apps. So it's very powerful. So automation 101, 
uh, how does an automation work? So there's two components of an automation. You have a, tr a trigger event and then you have an action. Trigger events are things that kick off the automation. So they are certain events in Airtable that just happen and that will trigger the workflow. And then an action is basically something that you're doing with that data, whether it's creating a record, finding a record, sending data to another app, running a script, uh, events like that. So there are many different events. Um, so let's go ahead and let's create that automation that number one, um, it's going to update those two columns um, the tax percent and the payroll tax figures whenever the form is submitted uh, so there's two ways of going about that first we need to add a trigger and we could either do when a form is submitted or when we could do uh, when a record is created so I'm gonna just go with when a record is created because the form automatically just creates the record and the next step here is we have to configure our trigger so in terms of trigger type it's when record is created and the next thing we have to do is we have to select a table so I'm just going to select the employees table so let's just now click choose record and you could select any of these but I'm just gonna select the last one that was submitted and there we go we have um, all the sample data from the test record and so whenever the trigger is successful it will display a little check mark review test results and that's how you know you're good to go and proceed to your action so to add the first action simply click on add advanced logic or action and now we need to specify the specific action we want Airtable to take so we want Airtable to update the record so simply click on update record here and now we need to configure the action so uh, in this configuration section simply click on the table that we want to update the record in this is going to be the employees table and then next we need to select a record id so this is always going to be dynamic we'll click on the plus icon and we select the air table record id and this is getting pulled from when a record is created trigger event so that is coming from here and so select this air table record id and we should be good to go so next we need to specify the fields that need to be updated so we only really just want to update one field because this payroll tax is automatically going to be calculated since it is um, a formula in terms of the data type so go ahead click on the tax percent and for tax percent we are just going to make that 10 percent just like the other rows or other um yeah the other rows in the employees table so that's good and we notice how we hard coded it this time we just set 10 uh and it's not it's not dynamic uh, but if we wanted it to be dynamic simply we can make it dynamic just click on this little gear icon click on dynamic and then you just add the variable from the test trigger or actually you could even set it to pull data from the previous step so let's change this back just make it static and we will just enter 10 percent like we had it next click on generate a preview and there you go now the record the last record we entered in the form has been updated you could scroll down here you could see that tax now has 10 percent and it's not showing these fields but when we eventually test it, we will see that the um, the payroll the the payroll tax has been updated. So we are actually going to add a final action to this automation, and the final action is going to be to send a welcome email to the new employee. So let's click on Add Advanced Logic or Action, and the action is going to be send email. Now we need to configure the step and let's configure um, the recipient. So it's going to be dynamically sent to the employee's email. So when we go into the test data, we just click on the email address. So that it's now dynamic. And now let's, let's enter in a subject. 
So I'm going to say welcome to Josh no code comma and then we're going to add for dynamic data the employee's first name. So that is done there. Now we have to do the message. So just pro tip right here, uh, instead of clicking this plus icon to add the dynamic data, simply you can just click on an open curly bracket and that will open up the uh, window to select the dynamic data. So I'm going to now select the first name. So hi, first name. Then I am going to write congrats on your new role as a position at Josh No Code. We are so excited to have you with us. As per your employee agreement, please see a summary of the employment terms below. And now let's enter some of that data from the submission. So we'll do the employee type. Next, we're going to do the compensation type. Add the compensation figure. And we will add the payroll tax. Great. And now we will just finish it by saying attach below. You will find your employment agreement. Shall you have any questions, please please do let me know. And for the attachments, we're just going to click on add and we are just going to insert a dynamic attachment and we're going to select the employment agreement file. Next, click on generate a preview. And we could see what the email is going to look like. We could see the subject, the attachments. Here is the summary. And that's it. So uh, now that all the steps have been tested, let's publish this automation. And I generally recommend once you publish your automation, run a test so that you can confirm that each step in the process is working as expected. So that's exactly what we're going to do. To test automation, simply submit the employee registration form. Okay, so you see here that Airtable created the new record from the form submission. And if we scroll to the right here, you can now see this time that the tax were sent updated along with the payroll tax amount. So everything's there just the way we wanted to. And now let's go ahead and check to see if we received that employee welcome email. Okay, so you can see here that we received the email from Airtable. It says, welcome to Josh No Code. And then here is the token for the first name value. Uh, then as we scroll down here, we have the token for the first name value as well. And then for role, we have IT manager. As we scroll down here, we have the values for employee type, compensation type, 
and compensation. So it all looks good and it matches the data in our record. So we can confirm from here that all the steps uh, in the automation are working as expected. And even if we scroll down here, we can also see that we have the employment uh, contract agreement attached. Um, so we know that it's working as expected and that is great. And there you have it, folks. We covered the fundamental aspects of Airtable from the data hierarchy with workspaces, bases, and tables to interfaces. And finally, diving into the world of automation to supercharge your workflows. I hope this tutorial has been a valuable learning experience for you. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps out with optimizing the YouTube algorithm so more people just like you can find this video. If you enjoyed this video and you want to stay updated on more tutorials and tips to enhance your productivity, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you never miss an update. If you have any questions, need assistance with Airtable, or want to explore how I can help you further with your data management needs, feel free to send me an email at hello at joshnoco.com. I'm here to help support you on your journey to becoming an Airtable pro. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, keep organizing, automating, and revolutionizing your data with Airtable.